Is there going to be a prime directive? Is artificial intelligence going to be ever controlled by that prime directive that thou shalt not harm a human? One wonders. And one wonders whether when artificial intelligence develops and proliferates and is used both for good and evil, because somehow humankind keeps finding newer ways of doing damage to humankind. Of course, that is only till the time we are divided by these, by these artificial borders between countries. Despite globalization, despite communication, despite our, despite our coming together in so many ways. And will we have to wait till Mars attacks for humankind to come together as one and then treat this an avenue for, for assistance rather than an avenue to outdo the other. And, and some of this remains, remains for all of us to, to watch, to wait and watch. But while we are at it, two, two things still come to mind, wherein it is important that we here in this audience ensure that as a national pursuit, as a pursuit towards the benefit of these small entities, and in this case, our nation, we work together in a manner that what we do here in India still manages to keep pace with other developments across the globe so that we don't find ourselves both left behind or simultaneously not at the same high table when it comes to decision-making, frameworks, and development of artificial intelligence. As has been seen in the past, every bit of technology that has been developed has invariably found, its, found some use in both defensive and offensive domains. And it's a cat and mouse game. 
At every step, you find something that is made to benefit humankind, and then something comes up to challenge it, to use it adversely. And with every such utilization comes up yet another technology to prevent or to outdo or to overcome the adverse effects of that technology. And I, I would believe artificial intelligence is, is very much likely to go the same way as we move on into the future. It is of particular relevance to national defense. But the national security as it is is not the domain for the military forces alone. Everything that we do today is connected in a much connected world, whether it is just as a result of communications or as a result of the interlinkages that work out. Some years ago, the cyber domain was a new one. Some years ago, space was a new domain, as got pointed out from the first launch of Sputnik some time ago. But all in all, as we moved on, they've become more and more interconnected, and so has artificial intelligence. The amount of data that we have today, the amount of data that continues to be developed as we move along, the amount of data that gets put together and collaborated and used for computation is increasing, and it's increasing by leaps and bounds. Moore's law, which talked about a particular timeline in the past, has already been overcome, in my opinion, several times over. And if that be the pace of development, it is only assisted, enabled, and further accelerated by artificial intelligence today. Which means then again that is, as we speak, we have to put together all collective wisdom, whether it is from academia, whether it is from industry, or whether it is from the policy makers and such policy framework developers to ensure that whatever is developed can be used to maximum benefit while retaining both the ability to use it positively as also prevent an adversary from using it negatively. The first computer virus, I think, um, the brain virus it was called, also came up very soon after the first operating system got, uh, got put out in the market. If you work on the same lines as we go on today, the use of artificial intelligence is very soon going to challenge the boundaries of the laws of nature, the laws of physics as we understand them, because one will get closer and closer to that envelope. And it is only then that unless we work together collaboratively, intelligently, and in timely manner, we could find ourselves having to face adversaries with significantly better and very capable abilities that we may find difficult to overcome. AI remains a force multiplier across domains. Humankind has limitations in terms of physical limitations of the human body. The cognitive limitations of learning and the practical limitations of presence. AI seems to transcend these and is able to crunch much larger amounts of data, to do it in much faster time frames, and to do it despite presence. And these capabilities also require them to be harnessed. And it is possible, because finally, when you really look at the root of things, AI was started from an algorithm. And that algorithm came from a human mind, which means at least so far, we still have the primacy of the human in this entire chain. Emerging technologies are redefining how we do business. They are redefining the pace at which transformation happens. They are redefining the pace with which we would be able to do any kind of business in the future. And if that be the case, one wonders how it will impact various domains of everyday life, whether it is in terms of how efficiently we build infrastructure, how efficiently we grow crops, how efficiently we transport individuals, how efficiently we actually get to that pursuit of happiness that humankind always aspires for. Under those circumstances then, it becomes extremely important that we employ 
appropriate tools, to build adequate tools, to create what we need as we go on. In the forces also, and as, has, as was just pointed out by Chief Marshal Chaudhary, the armed forces, the military forces, have been attempting to ensure that we also recognize the potential of this particular domain and reach out to various portions of, of national ability in order to harness it in the best way possible. India has been quite the leader in the cyber domain in terms of the amount of human intervention that we have provided in this domain in times in the past. I'm certain we can do that in the AI domain as well. Because in terms of imagination, and if I may use a more Indian term of jugad, I think nobody does it better than we do. If that be the case then, is it not possible that we put together our collective abilities, our collective imagination, in order to assist us along the way as we go ahead? And I'm certain that we will manage it adequately well. All it requires is for us to believe in ourselves and to ensure that we do it right. There are always two sides to every coin. The important part remains in ensuring that we utilize the maximum abilities of one side and prevent an adversary from utilizing that of the other. And I'm certain we'll be able to manage it with the strides that we make, with what we achieve at, at gatherings like this, and in methods that we actually work together to make it happen. Every technology, every technology can be harnessed and utilized, provided we do it in timely manner. Timing and timeliness is critical in this part. And if technology is going to develop at such breakneck speed, then it becomes even more important for us to be ahead of that curve in every aspect of our own endeavors as we harness that technology. And yet one hopes that as we go into the future, all of us here in this room and those that we represent will be actually able to do even better as we go on in this particular endeavor of ours. Startups and innovators require then to be able to use that imagination and we the relative oldies here and although like General Prasad pointed out and very aptly so, when he joined the military, I wasn't even born. And I'm certain there'll be more here who, who would fall in the same line if I were to talk about when, when I joined. But it is young minds, unfettered young minds with that ability to innovate, who will actually provide that opportunity for us to take some of these, some of these endeavors forward. Because most of us who stand here with uh, years of wisdom, or what we believe is wisdom, can definitely not, not match the intelligence that youth brings to the table. The imagination that a youngster has is not something that can be, uh, I mean, we shouldn't even try and uh, replicate what that young mind can do. So I would like to appeal to to all youngsters here that don't let your imagination be withheld from achieving what you can as a result of people like me who will tell you it can't be done. Come forward, I'm sure you'll find ways of, of how you will make it happen. You understand it better. You, you harness technology so much easier and you are confident about your own abilities in that domain. I'm certain you'll be able to, to succeed where many of us will tell you that you are heading off in directions unknown. For people like me here, I think we need to, need to assist these developments by ensuring that policies that are drawn up and the frameworks that are brought in 
support these kind of attempts to move on, to move ahead, and we support them also in terms of both providing the, them the opportunity and the confidence, and by being less risk averse as we have been in the past, so that we actually help such attempts to bear fruit. Lastly, of course, I'm certain that we have here at least the collective ability to do much better than we have done before. To ensure that we, we actually use models like or even better than DeepSeek to prevent what happens today in the world as deep fake and so be able to do it better as we go along. Thank you so very much for this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you so very much to all the organizers here at ICRA. I'm certain that this seminar and, uh, and the interactions that follow will actually be beneficial to those who attend. And I look forward to, to 